Hello and welcome to One North Main, BCA's magazine show where we profile the people, places and events that make this city, our city, great. 2015 is winding down, it was a great year, and we have some special events that we've covered recently that will put you not only in that holiday spirit, but have you looking forward to 2016. So coming up on today's episode, the Rocky Marciano Post Office reveals a new stamp. The Brockton High School Holiday Concert took place at our beautiful campus at Brockton High School. The Just Checking In Foundation held a special event at Melrose Cemetery. Brockton Symphony Orchestra held the annual holiday concert. Local Brockton author Jim Benson releases a new book. The Jubilate Chorale put on a music exhibition. So Brockton, sit back, relax, and see what your community, the City of Champions, has to offer. We are at the Rocky Marciano Building, a fantastic post office in downtown Brockton. It was dedicated in 2008. We're not here for that reason though. We're here because a special stamp was unveiled for the holiday season. What stamp was it? Well, if you're paying attention and looking behind me, you might see something. Here's another little hint. Take it away, peanuts. Charles Schultz created the lovable Charlie Brown and the Peanuts Gang. Anyone here know the names of the characters? Snoopy, Woodstar, Lion Saber, Lion Saber, Lion And in 1965, they, a Charlie Brown Christmas premiered on TV. Uh, the Postal Service is um, unveiling the Charlie Brown stamp as part of the 50th anniversary of the Charlie Brown Christmas that appeared on TV. So without further ado, I present you a Charlie Brown Christmas. A generation grew up on Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Woodstock, and it really a wonderful stamp the Postal Service has released. So I'd like everyone to uh, have a good time and have some cake. We're going to have a coloring contest and thank you all for coming.
have a New Year's resolution? Oh. Slow down. I'm always in a rush. I'm always stressed and, you know, anxiety ridden. I think I need to slow down. I need to take a step back and appreciate what I have and just slow down. Howard, do you have any New Year's resolutions this year? To be nicer to everybody. Yes, yes. <laughs> Howard, you need to work on that. He's a tough guy, right? He's a tough guy, right? Thankfully, the camera is not looking down. Look, keep it, keep it above. Um, it, oh, my dear, aren't you so sweet? <laughs> what a nice guy, that Aaron Tebow. great things about our show One North Maine is we highlight people and we highlight small groups doing great things in our community. That happened here recently right here at the Melrose Cemetery. 
Mary Waldron and the Just Checking In Foundation decided to purchase some wreaths and they got some community support to do so. What they did is they placed those wreaths on the headstones of our fallen veterans. We're going to listen to Mary and tell us how this came about. Mary Waldron, take it away. I go about once or twice a week to my husband's grave at Calvary Cemetery. And I looked around, particularly with the holiday season, and seeing some of these stones and gravestones without anything. And I look and I see that they're veterans. So over the last couple of weeks, 10 to 15 wreaths that I purchased, and I would go and I'd leave them and say a prayer and, you know, kind of like stuck in my head. It was something that I just did. And then I saw the story on the news about Arlington Cemetery and what they do in Arlington Cemetery. And I know that it's done elsewhere. I heard recently it's done at the Bourne Cemetery. Um, and I said, you know what, this is something I really want to do. I think, why aren't we doing this? And then I attended a meeting with veterans in Brockton for my work and hearing the veterans and what they're doing and how to get them back in jobs and when they come back. And I just said, I announced, I said, I'm going to do this. And I said, maybe not this year, but maybe next year. Left the meeting, called David Russell right away, my good buddy David Russell, and said, hey, I think I want to do this, but maybe for next year. And he says, why wait? He made some phone calls to Carol from Designing Images and Randolph and also Jim Burns from Fairway Landscaping. And by two hours later, I'm hearing that they're making inroads and getting wreaths, which that in itself was a challenge because it's the end of the season and they're already now into their seasonal, like for the spring. Anyway, long story is that they were able to obtain these wreaths and to get them delivered and many of them for cost and there were some anonymous donations um, and then it was like how many do we need and so David had, ended up calling Laureen um, Hardeman here at the cemetery and kind of get an estimate and so I was thinking maybe a couple hundreds but there's thousands 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 just here at Melrose so this is the first year we're doing it we're going to keep doing it it seems like there is a whole lot of people who really would like to do something good way of getting into the Christmas spirit and holiday spirit we acknowledge we will acknowledge those that are non-christians um, for those that are here as well veterans of all faith we're just here just to say thank you for your service not just only at veterans day memorial day but every day any resolutions Chris? um to probably go to the gym more yeah that's about it and what would you do with the gym would you hang out would you look in the mirror hey look at me look at me or would you actually do some work i would do work i would you know do some um, I don't know. Curls. <laughs> I'll be on the treadmill and doing some squats maybe. Yeah, squats. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Definitely stay away from the carrot cake and uh, any other sweets that really uh, probably no good for you at all. Taking care of myself, being healthier, um, getting some exercise, eating better. Those are those. That's my New Year's resolution. I hope I can stick to it. <laughs> all right, folks. The winter is coming. Ugh. I remember 2014 into 2015. You're watching Brockton Community Access, excellence in public, education, and government. And if you, yeah you, are complaining about the hot weather, just remember the glorious winter of 2015. Ugh. Right now, concertmaster Angel Falchinov, apologies Angel, Angel Falchinov will come and tune up the orchestra, then you can join me in welcoming maestro Emilian Badea. Enjoy the concert.
the Brockton Historical Society. What a place. Recently, renowned author Brockton's own Jim Benson had a book signing here. It's his fourth book. This one was a bit different than his previous three. It's a book of pictures of modern day Brockton. It's exciting and it's history. We're gonna go take a look inside and see what Jim had to offer. I'm here at the Brockton Historical Society with James Benson, and we have another delightful book in his series um, about Brockton. This one is Pictures, and it's in color. So, Jim, tell us uh, what inspired you to do, uh, is this book number three? This is on uh, Brockton, book number four. Okay. And uh, this was uh, Arcadia Publishing contacted me asking me if I would do this as part of their new series of images of modern America uh, because Brockton has been one of their best-selling titles, anything to do with Brockton, so they wanted this to be part of that group. Well, I got a chance to preview it, and today is the first day it's for sale. Um, Tell us how you selected the different pictures for the book. I noticed there's different photographers in this book. Uh, it was more difficult than the previous ones because it's modern photography. Uh, and it's just kind of a uh, overview of the city, people, places. Uh, a lot of the people are still living, uh, as opposed to the other books where pretty much everybody is dead. Uh, so it's... Uh, just has a different uh, audience and uh, there's parts of the book. Uh, the first chapter is uh, titled Gone, which are buildings that are no longer uh, in existence in the city. Okay, um, I've seen a few buildings go in the last 20 years anyway, maybe even 30. Um, there are some phenomenal pieces of architecture that were in the building. Um, I guess they live on in the book. Yes. Uh, like the Bessie Baker building or the um, Richmond Block, uh, which is now the uh, health center at the Connor Legion Parkway, it was a beautiful building. Uh, and a lot of others in there that uh, are no longer around, including some of the big industrial buildings, part of the George E. Keith complex in Campello that's gone, that mm -hmm. pictures of it being torn down. Um, the Keith Theater's in the book, if I'm not mistaken? Yep, Keith Theater. Uh, on Main Street in Campello where Defto's Liquor is today. Mm -hmm. So break down the book for us a little bit. Give people uh, a, you know, a preview, I guess, of coming attractions, so uh, to speak. In addition to the chapter gone, there's a chapter on the uh, fire department and the fire service in the city, which begins with uh, one of the earliest color um, newspaper uh, articles on the Grover uh, Shoe Factory fire in 1905. and. Uh, has pictures of various firefighters and chiefs right up to uh, the current Chief Williams along with uh, Mayor Carpenter and uh, retired Chief Francis and Galligan. Uh, and uh, there's uh, two pictures of father-son combinations, uh, George Churchill and his son and Ken Galligan and his son. Uh, then there's a uh, another chapter, Places, which are places that uh, still exist or may no longer exist as the business they once were, but the building is still there. And another chapter on uh, people and a chapter on the fair. Uh, a lot of the photos are some early uh, Stan Bowman color uh, photographs. And uh, the last page of the uh, book, which is a little strange, it's the last, but it's just uh, the way things fell in publication just as it was going to press is when uh, Senator Tom Kennedy died. And uh, we had, uh, through the uh, generosity of the Enterprise, a photograph that was taken about two weeks uh, before his passing with Governor Baker. And that's on the last page in the book as a tribute to Tom. Well, I know Tom pretty well, and I think he would have loved the book, looking at it and, and seeing it. It was interesting to see um, the different elected officials over the year. Um, the first female elected city council, which is Anna Buckley. I kind of forgot about that one. And uh, I th was she the president of the council at the time? I am not sure. Okay. Uh, the other thing that uh, I think is important is uh, I chose to dedicate this book to Jason Corb. Uh, who is the developer behind the uh, station lofts, the uh, rehab of Brockton's first brick shoe factory, the, and uh, the George Knight Lily Brackett building, uh, and uh, 
I think it was important to acknowledge what Jason's done and kind of been the lead for historic preservation uh, in the city and downtown. And uh, there are some current pictures in here, not only of station lofts, but also of uh, Trinity Financial's big project downtown. So uh, it shows the good, the bad, the ugly. Have a Brockton, another one North Main in the books. Thanks for watching. 2015 was a great year, but it's not over for one North Main. Our next episode will be our 2015 year in review. To learn more about what we do as far as one North Main, please visit our YouTube page at youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels on one word. For everyone in one North Main, I'm Jay Miller, and we will see you around town.